gather here to respond to the joint statement that's been issued by uh, the Prime Minister and the President. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I have to raise the issue uh, that how disappointed I am that the Prime Minister has not raised the issue uh, with the President around the growing concerns uh, that Canadians have expressed, and that is the issue around the travelling ban. Canadians expect our Prime Minister to show up and to actually do their job and to tell the uh, President that the, uh, the travel ban uh, is something that we cannot support, is something that uh, Canadians reject, that we cannot have a country a democratic country issuing a travel ban based on people's religion uh, and their place of birth. And with this visit, uh, it appears to me that the Prime Minister did not raise this issue and to stand up for human rights on behalf of Canadians. He said it was because he didn't want Mr. Trudeau in a joint news conference said he felt that if Canadians would not want him to go to the U.S. and lecture another country, especially for this introductory meeting, on how to run their country, essentially. And you're saying Canadians would want him to do that. So who's right? Well, I think Canadians expect a prime minister to stand up for human rights, no matter who they're sitting next to. I think Canadians expect for our prime minister to stand up for what we believe in, what is the foundation of our values. And that is to say that when one group is being targeted, uh, that we're all being targeted, that we must stand united. If we're going to give meaning to the words, to say to those that are being hurt, that are being discriminated, discriminated against, that we stand united with them. And so so um, the Canadians that I've spoken with have said that to me and expressed that to me very clearly. And I had hoped that the Prime Minister would do that. I had also hoped the Prime Minister will go to this meeting and point to the examples how Canadians are being impacted. We have growing stories of how Canadians are being stopped at the border, that they're being interrogated by, at the border, and being turned away at the border. And so these are real concerns, in spite of the assurances to say that this travel ban would not impact Canadians. This is clearly not the case. Canadians are being impacted. So I think Canadians expect our Prime Minister to do his job and to get to the meeting and to raise these concerns with the President. I think it's the Prime Minister's job to go and stand up for Canadian values and our Canadian values that is that we are staunch defenders of human rights. The fact of the matter is is that the bans that has been imposed by the President are having an impact for Canadians. I think we expect our Prime Minister to go and tell the President how it is impacting Canadians. Canadians are being interrogated at the border. They're being asked why are they attending mosques so often. They're being asked what is their opinion about President Trump. How is this acceptable? If our Prime Minister doesn't stand up for us, who will? So I expect my Prime Minister to do exactly that. Stand up for human rights, stand up for Canadian values, and no matter where you are and who you're with, that's what we expect our Prime Minister to do. Is there a way, though, for Canadian officials to address these types of matters that you outlined behind the scenes as opposed to in front of a microphone and in front of um, the, the media? Well, I think they need to do it wherever they are. I teach my children, I have two young kids, that whenever we see somebody bullying another person, being discriminatory towards another child, that you need to stand up. I teach my children that value, that you cannot be complicit, you cannot walk away, because when you do, you're part of that problem. And so, you know what? My, our, my Prime Minister, our Prime Minister tweeted, right? Right after the ban to say, Canada welcomes you. Right? That has to give meaning to that and where it counts by real action to which this government has not taken any real action. And as well, now he has an opportunity to say to the president who issued these edicts to say this is not acceptable, not to us as Canadians, because it's hurting our Canadian values, it's hurting us as people, and we must address this issue together. It's not a shaming process, but it's being an honest, an honest process to say this is really significant significant to us and we must work through it. If we turn a blind eye, which is what we're doing, we're being complicit and that is not acceptable.